Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And now we'd like to introduce you to the funniest man this side of the Mississippi, ladies and gentlemen, Ray Scott. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And now I would like to introduce to you the sound of Memphis, the pickinest pickers in town. Hey, and you know what? They ain't white and they ain't black, but I met them in a cornfield and they played so good Crows brought back corn that it had stole four years ago. And I would also like to give a special thanks to the Memphis Chamber of Commerce, the Ku Klux Klan, and the John Burke Society for making all of this possible. Now me. I, I, I don't like surprise. Now, I, I got a surprise once that ruined my whole life, you know? When I was a little boy, I went to a birthday party and there was some white kids there and some colored kids that was with me. And the white kids brought a, a present for the lady who was giving the party, brought her umbrella wrapped in newspaper. We, we couldn't buy nothing, so we brought her a cake and we didn't have no icing on it, just a plain cake. So the little girl said, well, I'm going to write something on the top. That'll do it. So she wrote the word F-U-C-K. And when the lady got to prison, she says, how dare you insult me with vulgar language? The little girl said, I, I don't know what's vulgar about it, teacher. It just stands for, for us colored kids. <laughs> Now take that, Miss Emily Post, and put it on your Dr. Scrolls foot pad, and then stamp it on the side of your number three tennis shoe. <laughs> and you know, quick surprises, those, those surprises, they fool everybody, even you out there. Now y'all can be fooled, you know what I mean? And like, for instance, now, of course I got confused about that F-U-C-K, you know what I mean? You the same one. Y'all will come up with the same thing if I tell it to you. And you can't stop me from telling it to you because I'm going to suggest a four-letter word to your mind, but I got a surprise for you. I got a five-letter word in mind. But you're going to judge me and condemn me because that four-letter word going to pop up first. Hey, lady, you watch him now. Hey, and miss, you watch him too. See, now you watch him all take advantage of me. Here's the joke. Come here, y'all. There was a rooster in a barnyard making love to all of the chickens. The rooster got tired of making love to all of the chickens, so he went out on the roadside, you know what I mean? And, and he, he, he ran into a dove. And he pounced on that dove, and the dove went away singing, I am a dove, and I have been loved. <laughs> then a log passed. Yeah, and listen, the log walked by, and the rooster pounced on that log, made love to the log, and the log went away singing, I am a log, and I have been sparked. <laughs> then a duck passed. See, that's what I tell you, lady. See, see, she, she, see what I tell you. Look, listen at her, you see? Uh, hey. The I'm going to say it, it'll be a barn here tomorrow. Listen, the duck passed, and the rooster pounced on the duck, and the duck went away singing, I'm a Drake, and there's been a mistake. D-R-A-K-E. Thank you very much for that marvelous trying to look. You no know, surprise. Don't get it, lady. Gee, darling, I, you wearing a short dress there. I like the way your knee grows. You, you can understand what I'm saying, lady. No disrespect to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to tell you something. I got some more surprises for you. But do you know, I worked at many a club in my life, but hey, y'all are the nicest group, group of people I ever worked for. That's right. You too, mister. You nice too. How you do, sir? Hi. Welcome. Come on in, y'all. You're just in time to miss me. This is a nice group of people here. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to surprise you again. Listen to this. Don't laugh, lady. I'm going to surprise you. I tell you, listen, a little boy was bouncing a little white ball. And the white ball bounced over the fence into the chicken yard. And the nearsighted chicken saw the white ball and thought it was an egg. 
and sat on it. The little boy went in and said, give me my ball. The chicken wouldn't move, and he kicked the chicken. And his mother said, now, just for kicking that chicken, you get no more chicken for two weeks. And he was so mad, he, he, he walked in the house and kicked the dog. She said, just for kicking that dog, you get no more hot dogs for two weeks. And the surprise came when his daddy came home and he stepped on the cat's tail. And the little boy said, Daddy, you got a surprise coming. That's two surprises for you, ladies. Thank you very much. I want you to know this, too. When you applaud for me, I love it. You know why I love it? Because I got a little five-year-old daughter. Every time I go home, she always said, Daddy, did the people make you feel good? Did they laugh at you even though you weren't using them big words? Well, listen, thank you very much, doctors, lawyers, and whoever and whatever, for making it possible for me not to lie to my little girl. I don't want to get surfy, because I don't need this job, you know. I can go back to my old gig, smuggling pork in Jerusalem. I'm really Jewish, but I don't say it because I don't want to be segregated two times. Hey, you know, last week I was discussing the public. Public is so strange, they got surprises for everybody. Here's a fella took his wife to the doctor for the doctor to examine her. And would you believe this? This woman was built 38, 14, 44. And that was just her head, surprise. Listen, the doctor told her, say, I'll examine your husband, you wait outside. The doctor told her to pull off her clothes, put her up on a table, and saw her beautiful body and said, listen, I'm going to examine you good, but I got to pull off my clothes and get up there with you, too. And would you believe, ladies and gentlemen, that that doctor examined that man's wife for two hours and 20 minutes. And the husband got so nervous, I said, he just rushed in and said, what you doing, doc? The doctor said, uh, I'm just taking your wife's temperature. He said, well, continue, doctor, but when you pull your thermometer out, it had better have some numbers on it. That just goes to show you, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Listen here, I, let me tell you, I was on a train one time, and I was walking through the aisle, and, and a lady ran up to me, fun-looking old lady, she said, who, ain't you Harry Belafonte? I said, no, madam, I'm not Harry Belafonte. And then a big, fine, t- she was built, ooh, hey, she looked good enough to sop with a biscuit. She walked up to me, she says, uh, pardon me, sir. But aren't you Harry Belafonte? I said, day, 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 oh, <laughs> And speaking of big fine tits, let me tell you something. They say that three men to every woman here in America, that's right when the money is right. But then they say in the books, it's three women for every man. Well, if that's true, I, I'm damn sure not getting my share because, look, these pretty girls, they be passing me. Pretty girls don't bother me. I wish they would. They be passing me, walking by me, but I have to have tolerance. I have to wait till I, I reach the end of the rainbow to get my pot of gold. I just can't be rushing in on a bite. It, it ain't going to come to me. You know, I ain't going to sit there waiting for no change. I just have to go out there and reach for it myself, but I got to be cool. Take it easy. Like... Hello, darling. That's my approach, you know. Taking it easy. I got to be careful. Big legs, long, beautiful hair, gorgeous features, but I just can't wish I got to wait till my chance comes. Because my woman, she's ugly. (laughs) Speaking of possible and impossible, I never thought it would be possible for a man to come home and catch his wife in bed with another man and she pull the sheet up over her head and say, go ahead and stand there and believe your old lying eyes. (laughs) And, And another thing, I never thought it would be possible as poor as I've been all of my life that I'd get a telegram and it said your uncle left your department store in Cuba. <laughs> and a Cadillac franchise 
with Wallace's Motors in Gaston, Alabama? <laughs> this really must be the age of Aquarius. <laughs> or the rise of a darker night. Now you guess who's coming to death. <laughs> Alabama, 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 Alabama. Alabama, Alabama, Alabama. Speaking of Alabama, listen, would you believe this? A cop was going to give me a ticket for speeding through Alabama and I was fixing the flat. I said, officer, uh, here's $50. I don't want to go to jail. He said, do I look like a dishonest cop to you? He said, well, I'm as honest as a day is long. I said, here's 300. He said, wasn't that a beautiful sunset? <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll just bow your heads in prayer, we shall now pray for the governor. <laughs> oh, Lord. Let the governor have a 17-car accident with a gasoline truck that's been hit by a match wagon over the Grand Canyon. And if that's not bad enough for the governor, let the ambulance that's taking him to the hospital have four flat tires. Let the motor crack, let the block bust, let the windshield crack, let the driver have a stroke and a hemorrhage and run into a brick wall, Lord. That's housing nuclear warheads and TNT, Lord. And if that's not bad enough for the governor, when he get to the hospital, let the doctor be a junkie with a gold ribbon on his back and a ring of tang in his room. And let the hospital catch on fire. And let the hospital ceiling cave in on the operating table. And let the doctor have a rusty scalpel in his hand. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. If that's not bad enough for the governor, Lord have mercy. Let him be stranded in the Sahara Desert. 10,000 miles of dry sand. Eyeballs bulging. Tongue trolling. Lips cracked. Crawling on his hands and knees. And let him come up on a coo coo running fruit stand a frosty fruit juice in that hot desert and let them have a black waiter back there lord like they always have and if that's not bad enough for the governor lord have mercy let lightning strike him in the heart 38 times let muddy water run in his grave and let possums, 14 of them, suffering from hydrophobia, eat through the casket looking for some new meat and make him so ugly until he will resemble a gorilla lord sucking hot Chinese mustard lying across a railroad track with freight trains, 22 of them running across his kneecaps and if that that's not bad enough for the governor. Lord, you suffer. 
Make him live in agony. When he wake up tomorrow morning, oh Lord, let him have nappy hair and be black like me. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, will you excuse me while I go wipe my brow? Hey,